Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered and keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Well, hello, our Savior's members, friends, and guests. It's so great to see you this morning as we worship our Lord and Savior Jesus together. Today we are on week two of the story. We're going to be hearing about the stories of Abraham and many of his descendants. It's going to be an exciting day. And want to remind you that following worship today at 10 a.m., there is a Zoom Bible study that I will be leading based on uh, chapter two of the story. And if you haven't picked up your complimentary copy of this novel version of the Bible, it's excerpts of the NIV translation in 31 chapters. Feel free to check it out um, and pick one up here at our Saviors Mondays through Thursday afternoons from 1 to 5. Also, speaking of Bibles, last Sunday our third graders received their Bibles and we're so excited for them. Darla and I had a time of education with them, with their families, and we want to show you some of our third graders that received their Bibles. <laughs> Now hear the words of our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things that we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead to sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Good morning, our saviors. Welcome to worship this morning. Please join us in our gathering song, the famous one. <laughs> Your glorious 
with you. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now at this time, we delight in a musical offering from Holly Newton, Jen Sikora, Kelly Schoons, and Mike and Rachel Schoons. There once was a man named Abram, who was a descendant of Noah. God told him to move with his wife Sarai, an entire family away from where they lived. God made a promise, I will make you into a great nation and bless you, and all of the people on earth will be blessed through you. 
So Abram and his family left. At one point, they stopped and God told him to look around. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your children. Then, one night, God took Abram outside. Look up and count the stars. This is the number of children you will have. But Abram was already 75 years old, and Sarai was way too old to have children. So they decided that Sarai's servant Hagar should have Abram's child. Hagar became pregnant and gave birth to a son named Ishmael. Yet God told Abram again, you will be the father of many nations. God changed their names to Abraham and Sarah and promised that it would be through Sarah that God's blessing would come. Exactly as God promised, Sarah became pregnant, giving birth to a son named Isaac. When Isaac was still a young boy, God told Abraham to take his son up on a mountain and sacrifice him. Abraham took Isaac, laid him on an altar, and took out his knife to kill him. But an angel stopped Abraham, and God provided a ram to sacrifice in place of Isaac. Years later, Abraham and Sarah died and left everything they owned to Isaac. Isaac married and had twin sons, Jacob and Esau. Esau was Isaac's favorite, and as the oldest, he was set to gain his father's inheritance. But Jacob wanted the inheritance, so he came up with a scheme to trick his father, who was now old and blind, into promising it to him. He dressed in Esau's clothes and put animal skin on his hands because Esau's hands were very hairy. Confused, Isaac gave his blessing to Jacob and promised him the inheritance instead of Esau. This caused a huge fight, one that almost ended in murder before they went their own ways. Thankfully, they reunited and God promised to bless Jacob's family. Jacob had 12 sons of his own. And like his father and grandfather before him, Jacob had a favorite son. Little did Jacob know that his favoritism would put his son, Joseph, in danger of being killed by his own brothers. Dear friends in Christ, Let's begin this time together in a prayer. Wow, God, it is amazing to see the Holy Scriptures come to life before us through art, to hear the stories of Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Jacob and Esau is so inspirational. Lord, remind us that they were ordinary people that had struggles and questions and doubts and fears and times of great joy and triumph as well. May we see ourselves in these stories and recognize your love for us. And all God's people said, amen. Well, good morning, our saviors, members, friends, and guests. And again, welcome to this time of worship together. Now, I don't know about you, but I am what is called not just type A, but type K for Karna. I love to be very organized. In fact, every single day, I have a checklist of everything I like to do and get accomplished. I am definitely a planner. It's probably a good thing that I didn't buy a 2020 planner because this year has been such a tumultuous year that no one ever saw a pandemic coming. But in general, I really like to have an orderly, organized life, almost like a Marie Kondo sense of structure and wanting to achieve goals and wanting to be successful and, and do things that I set out to accomplish, which makes a lot of sense. Having a game plan for a football coach is a great thing to do for strategy purposes. An architect often needs a blueprint to be able to design something beautiful and to really know how to accomplish that, correct? A lawyer probably spends a lot of time thinking through a closing argument. So to be prepared and organized, I like that. I like to have goals, plans, 
achieve things, set out to do what I want to accomplish. Because part of that is that it makes me feel at peace, it makes me feel secure and safe when things kind of turn out the way I hope to. But what about when plans don't come to fruition, when things are not actualized, when maybe what we set out to do doesn't really happen? That can create fear and overwhelm, frustration, and sometimes even heartbreak. When I worked at Bible camp several years ago when I was in college, we made a list of all of our hopes and dreams and aspirations of life because we were told in a leadership training that the more you write down your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, the more likely that they'll, they'll transform from just a thought into a real goal that maybe you would be more likely to come true and to accomplish. So I was so excited at 19 years of age, I was making my whole list of everything I wanted to accomplish in my life, almost like a bucket list. And of course, one of my greatest hopes and, and joys that I wanted so much in life was the gift of a life partner. So when I turned 25, I thought, oh, well, that person's probably still out there, 30 years of age, Okay, what are you up to now, God? I'm, I have this hope, this dream. Age 35, it started looking a little bleak for me. And I wondered, wow, I had these hopes and dreams. I was hoping that this was in alignment with God's hopes and dreams for my life. And sometimes you hear that phrase, that God has a plan. Well, I wanted to ask. I wish I knew what it was. And after a while, of just waiting and wondering what God was doing, what God was up to. It was a real crisis for me in faith. And I began to question, and I began to be overwhelmed by grief and loss of just the wondering what was the plan. And if perhaps if God had a plan, did I mess it up? It's normal and natural for us as humans to have such questions, to begin to wonder what is, what is God doing and where is God and what is God's plan? And here in this story of Abram, we see a powerful story of someone learning to trust in the overarching vision that God would have for his life. And it begins at the very beginning of chapter two in the story, God blesses Abram. God gives him a hope and a future and a vision for his life that he was going to be so blessed as that the, the number of stars in the sky, so would his descendants be. The number of uh, sand on the seashore, so his descendants would be. But Abram was 75 years of age. That kind of did not seem realistic or possible. And yet, Abram drops everything and begins to go to this land that God would show him and begins that trust walk. So after a while, after waiting and wondering, oh, really? Is this what God intends for? Maybe Abram and Sarah were very questioning God. And, and so they thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe we should try to try to help God out a little bit, you know? And they find Hagar, his maidservant, and, and, and then they have Ishmael, a child of Abram. But God said, well, Sarah will have a child. It was so impossible for them to even fathom that God could possibly do something as miraculous and as amazing as that. And eventually, when Abraham is 100 years of age, and Sarah is in her 90s, they finally have Isaac, which means laughter, because the thought of it just made them laugh. But in that time of waiting and wondering, Abram began to realize that he could trust this God, 
that God really did have a big vision for not only his life, but all of his descendants, that he really would be this father of many nations, that there would be this bigger overarching vision to bless the world. And Isaac begins to trust in this God that Abram trusted in and knew that God would provide a lamb and instead of having him sacrificed. And Isaac, even when he meets Rebekah, his servant, prayed to create space for wondering what is God up to and is this the right person for Isaac to marry? And Isaac and Rebekah, they find each other. And then we have Jacob and Esau. And again, there's that question that, that can we trust this God? What is God up to? And, and Jacob steals the birthright from Esau and the blessing from his father. And then he's afraid because he's going to encounter his brother again and ends up wrestling with God and wrestles with God so much to the point where he would not stop until God would bless him. And God does bless Jacob transforms him, gives him a new name, which is Israel, which means wrestling with God. And then Jacob would have 12 sons, the youngest, Joseph, that we'll get to next week. But those 12 sons would be the 12 tribes of Israel. In the New Testament, we would have 12 disciples. And you kind of see, wait a minute, God really does have a big picture vision there is something huge happening here because the 12 tribes of israel the 12 disciples that would then go and spread the love of jesus god in the flesh to the whole world you see abram god showed him what the plan was at the very beginning of the chapter god showed him everything that he would be blessed that what God was all about, the only intent that God had, was to bless and to love and to heal the world. Did you catch that? The only intent that God had was to bless and to love and to heal the world. And ultimately that would happen through Jesus, as the story will go there. That's pretty powerful. God's plans are all about loving and healing and blessing and continuing to show us that God is trustworthy. As I mentioned, last Sunday, our third graders got their Bibles and they were so excited about that. And one of the verses that we shared with them was Psalm 119, 105, which says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And whenever I hear that verse, I often think of a friend of mine named Tom that when he was getting ordained as a pastor and I went to his ordination service, there was an Old Testament professor from Luther Seminary that preached and his name is Mark Thronveit. And Dr. Thronveit talked about that the image we see in Psalm 119, 105, the image that we often have in our minds is that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, that often we think of a mag-like flashlight that is beaming down a forest path that you can see 50 feet ahead of where you are. But Dr. Thronveit said, actually, that's not the image that the psalmist was trying to convey. Because all they had back then was a tiny little saucer, a tiny little flame that was just enough light to see your next step, maybe two, but that's it. When I shared that with a friend of mine after hearing that message at my friend Tom's ordination, my friend Diane said, wow, just enough light to not be afraid, just enough light to catch your bearings and to know you are loved. Sometimes it might feel like we're walking in the dark, but God, God's plan is always about love and blessing and healing. 
I think about another Tom that I would unexpectedly meet one day, and that is my father-in-law. You see, little did I realize that when I was 37, finally, on August 2nd, 2014, I would meet someone pretty special, my husband, Brian. And a month later, I was meeting his parents for the first time. And Brian forewarned me, he said, now if my dad throws a zinger at you, it probably means he likes you. We've got a crazy, wacky sense of humor in the Moscolic household. I'm like, okay. So the very first words Brian's dad says to me at Outback Steakhouse, I'll never forget, were, what are your intentions with my son? Oh, I was a little speechless, but I gave the answer that came right out of my heart, to love him. The intentions, the plans of God are to love, to bless, to heal, and to give hope that God's intentions for each and every one of us and for the world is that we would not only experience that blessing, but that we would also share that blessing, that love, and that healing power with the world. I'm so excited to be studying God's word with great intention this year with all of you. And my hope and prayer is that we too can see ourselves in these stories where sometimes it's difficult to trust when you can't see where you're going except for maybe a step or two. Where sometimes you might have frustrations when the plan might seem to be going on a detour or off course. But nothing can thwart the plan of God's love, God's healing, and God's blessing for the world. May we experience that love, that blessing, that healing today. And may we also share that abundantly with the world that God loves. God bless. Amen. We appreciate your offerings and support of our continuing ministry at Our Savior's Lutheran Church, a caring community called by Christ to serve and live in faith. Contributions can be made by check, text, online, or mobile app. For details, please see Donate on our website at oslcstillwater.org. Thank you for sharing from the abundance with which God has blessed you. Give 
us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away. Here in this place the new light is shining, now is the kingdom and now is the Now, would you please follow along with the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated. Restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails and help us be discerning as a country in an election year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill, especially Owen Nelson, Sandy Hewitt, Larry Herman, Paul Rickert, Allison Kirk, Tracy Saunders, Barry Zimdars, Ray Vaughn, Bob Burns, and Diane Sage. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who seek to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our mission partners locally, regionally, and globally, including LADC Preschool and Nursery, Chivago, the Anuit Community, Open Hands Midway, Malafu, Tanzania, Mission Jamaica, and Zacaleo, Guatemala. Bless all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, that they may also feel energized, engaged, and equipped to receive your grace and share your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. If you are communing alone today, you will see a hand reach out and let that represent you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And if there is more than one in your household, you may commune each other at this time. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. This week we have several birthdays and anniversaries in our community. So I want to highlight it's been Mallory Atsuka's birthday and Valerie Kubel. And also we celebrate the anniversaries of Mark and Christine Olson and Ruth and OJ Rusted uh, want to honor their parents' anniversary and they have provided the beautiful altar flowers here today. So let's have a prayer of blessing for all the birthdays and anniversaries. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for always walking with us each and every day of our lives. Today we thank you for Mallory Atsuka, Valerie Kubel, Mark and Christine Olson, and Ruth and OJ Rusted as they recognize their parents' anniversary. Bless each and every one of them and all who are celebrating. In your name we pray. Amen. At this time, we join together in our closing hymn, God Be With You, Till We Meet Again. God be with you till we meet again. Our good counsel guide upon you. With the shepherd's care and fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.